time for yin yoga. Today, we'll be using props, but I'll give you alternatives if you don't have any props. Um, today, we'll start in child's pose. So child's pose, you can do without props, but I'll show you a few ideas if you do want to use props. If you're not using props, big toes together, knees apart, walk the arms out in front of you, bring the forehead down to rest on the mat. If you do want to play with props, a bolster is really nice in child's pose. You could take a bolster in front of you the long way and it goes between the knees. So you don't want to bring it too far back between the thighs. Otherwise you won't have anything to lie down on. Then you can walk the hands. This is option A. I'll give you another option after this one too. You walk the hands down, chest down, and then turn the head to one side and rest the head. So if this feels like it's too low, or you just want to try something different, you could take a block, bring it underneath the bolster lowest height, and then rest the head on the block with the bolster between. So, and you can play with round with where you want that block to be. And it just lifts everything a little bit higher. For some of us, it's more comfortable. You might find comfort in all three options. So if that's the case, then maybe try something you haven't done before just to change things up. And as you close the eyes, start to settle into your child's pose. Take a deep breath in through the nose out through the mouth, nice and soft, as long as you can. Inhale in through the nose. Again, back out through the mouth. Inhale in through the nose. Slowly exhale back out through the mouth. This time in through the nose and back out through the nose. Keep going with this breath. Ujjayi breath. Feeling your focus and attention starting to come to your practice away from everything else. If you have the head turned in one direction, lift the head, turn it the other way. See how that feels. Sometimes the neck only wants to go one way. If that's the case. Don't feel like you have to stay in this direction. You can always turn the head back around whenever you want. And you'll start to lift the head back up, walk the chest away from the mat. If you have the bolster, just turn it to the side, still keeping it in front of you. If you're using a block, set that off to the side. You're coming in a sphinx pose. So you could use the bolster. You can also skip it. I'll show you with the bolster first. You'll bring the elbows down in front of the bolster. You're up on the knees, hands down on the mat. And you want the hands to be right in line with the elbows. So not wider, not narrower, just straight forward. 
walk the feet back behind you, set the hips down onto the mat. So your hips are on the mat, bellies away from the mat, tops of the feet resting on the mat. And the chest starts to go forward. The tail starts to point back behind you. Look down the bridge of the nose. This is Sphinx with the bolster. Without the bolster, it's the same thing. Elbows are down on the mat, right underneath the shoulders. Chest is reaching forward. And you're still looking down the bridge of the nose. So some version of, of Sphinx with or without props. And when we point the tailbone back toward the heel, the heels, that's what gives us length in the lower back. So that's why that cue is important. Some of us, the tail naturally wants to go up toward the sky and that's too much of an arch in the lower back and takes away space. With all of these yin poses, we're not trying to go as deep as we possibly can or push as much as we can, you just get the body set up in the shape and then you see where you can let go still being in the shape, but with less effort and more ease. And if at any point you need to take a break, feel free to do so. You can just rest the head down on the mat uh, on top of the hands. And then if you need that break, you take it as long as you need it. And you come back whenever you feel ready. These holds are longer. This pose in particular took me a while to work my way up to with a longer hold. So don't feel like you're suffering to stay in it the whole time. You just work your way up taking breaks helps to do that. You'll start to blink open for the eyes for this next one. You won't need any props. We'll still stay prone. So on our stomach, if you do have the, um, bolster underneath you, you'll need to come up a little bit, slide the bolster off to the side and then come back to Sphinx pose without anything underneath you. So this will be our setup, turn the hands in. Doesn't matter which one's in front of the other, but one, both forearms are on the mat, one forearm in front of the other, you want to feel like the chin is ahead of the top form. So you might need to walk the hands in or the arms back a little bit to make that happen. Start to walk the hands away from one another, and you'll start to feel some width across the shoulder blades. We'll all be in a very different place with this one, especially the tighter your shoulders are. So find an easy place to be with it. You can let the head and the neck go. Sometimes people like to rest their head on something. So that could be a block, a bolster. You could put that in front of you and just find the right height, whatever you have lying around. If you feel like you don't need anything, don't feel like you have to have anything. Close the eyes, start to drop in.
trying to stay focused on your breath. You should be able to hear the sound of it. If your room is quiet enough, if you are practicing in a louder space, then you should be able to feel the breath move up and down the back of the throat. You'll start to walk the elbows back in. So one forearm's in front of the other and then switch it. So the other forearm is in front. Maybe what you'll probably definitely need to walk the hand, the arms back. So the chin's ahead of the front uh, forearm. And then you'll come back in, take your time. It's a different shoulder. Start to move the hands away from you. Start to let the head come down toward the mat. It doesn't have to touch. Maybe you rest the forehead on something. You have something already there, then you're already set up and that's a great place to be. If it's in the right spot.
Last little bit left of this hold. And start to lift the head, widen the elbows. And to rest, let's come to uh, arms back behind you, turning the head to one side and just resting on the mat this way. If this isn't comfortable for whatever reason, you could stack the hands and rest the forehead down on the hands. But the arms back behind you is a little bit uh, more relaxing for the shoulders. And you can let the elbows flare out. You can feel that width across the upper back that you just made. You'll feel a natural rounding of the upper back. Shoulder blades just falling apart. Falling away from one another. <laughs> If you have the head turned in one direction, maybe lift it, turn it the other way, see how that feels. And we'll start to come back up. So I'll lift the head up, bring the hands to the mat, come up to hands and knees. Once you come up to hands and knees, stack the shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Let's do a few rounds of cat cow real slow on the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail on the exhale, round the whole spine. You'll just keep going back and forth on your own. You'll feel the rounding is, uh, the opposite of what we've been doing. We've been focused on being on our stomach with a slight back bend and a deeper back bend with the Sphinx pose. So you can be gentler with the cow pose or with the cat pose, the rounding of the spine. One more cycle. And you'll come to seated. So bring the feet over to one side, then out in front of you. If you have a block, a block would be really nice for this next one. You'll take the block on the lowest height, bring it back behind you so it's the widest width, and then sit the hips up onto the block. And if you don't have a block, try it without the block. You can see that uh, how that feels. So legs out in front of you, you're sitting up on the block, hips are lifted away from the mat. Lean over to the right hip, bend the left leg, see if you can get the foot to the top of the mat. So the toes are pointing back behind you. And if you're on a block, you want that foot all the way up against the, the block, the inner edge of the foot. So maybe you're here, this is half saddle, right leg still out in front of you. If you feel like this is too high up, then extend, lean over to the right again, extend that left leg back, or just bring the sole of the foot down to the mat. You'll set the block down and then see if you can lean to the right, bring that right uh, left foot back behind you. This time, left foot goes outside of the left hip. You know you're here for a while. So if this is already difficult, then you wanna bring yourself back up on something. And then if the knee's just not bending back this way, that happens, then you bring the sole, the left foot inside of the right leg, and this is your shape and you can stay here. You can probably do this without a block underneath the hips. You could put a block underneath the knee though, if there's trauma there. So I'm gonna come to this with the block underneath. Oh, I shouldn't get into it this way. <laughs> Sometimes I realize I'm not doing it the way you're supposed to and people are watching me. Okay, so uh, top of the foot down wherever you are, sitting up tall, and then I'll give you a couple of other options to play with. So if you've got enough to chew on here, you stay here, you want the knees as close together as possible. Maybe they're touching, maybe they're not. Maybe you start to walk, make sure the hips are even on whatever's underneath you. Walk the hands back and you can just lean back on the hands. If this left knee is starting to lift away from the mat, then come forward, you've probably gone too far. 
So maybe you stay here, tailbone shifting forward toward um, the right foot, not back. And so we're all different with how comfortable we are with this shape. So if you're on a block, you stay here. If the hips are easily touching the mat and you're already reclined back, you could come down onto the forearms, which is lower. But not if you're if you're on the block, you don't want to go down too low. And then some people can lie all the way down onto the mat. So heads on the mat, whole back. That's definitely if you're not on the block, you don't want to do that with the hips lifted. Hips need to be down on the mat to keep it all in one line. So you figure out where you want to be. If the chest is lifted, looking straight forward is a great way to keep that neck long. You don't want to look up or crank the head all the way back. So you can keep the gaze forward and then it's up to you if the eyes are open or closed. But we're getting into that left hip left knee, left ankle, top of the left foot. Also the muscles are getting a bit of a stretch, especially that left quad. Depending on what we have going in our body, you'll feel maybe something more in one area over another. The higher the chest is, the gentler the shape is. So knowing your option of how to come out of it a little bit so you can find more comfort. We'll start to come out. If you're all the way down on your back, bring the hands and the forearms to the mat so you can start to lift the head looking forward. Once you come up onto the forearms, you'll start to walk yourself back up onto the hands. We're all sitting back, reclined on the hands, and then you'll start to walk the hands forward, coming back up to seated. You need to lean over to the right to bring that left leg forward, hands back behind you, soles of the feet wide on the mat, knees side to side. That's a long time to be in that shape for some, definitely for me, that's not a shape that I really enjoy all that much. Some people absolutely love it. Okay, so this time sit with the legs out in front of you. If you're up on a block, you can stay up on the block. Sole the left foot to the mat. So we're going into a different one. Step the left foot over the right leg. So right leg stays extended. Grab onto that outer left ankle, bring the right foot over to the right. So if you're up on a block and you feel like this is just too much lift and too high, then step the left foot back to the mat, lift the hips up, set the hips down onto the mat. Same thing. Left foot steps over the right knee, bring that left foot over to the right. You're working towards stacked knees. You're putting some pressure on this right leg. It'll be a nice opening for the backside of the right leg. You can stay just like this with the chest lifted or you can start to walk the hands forward, putting more weight onto the hips and the backside of that right leg. So you figure out where your pose is on uh, for this shape and stay there. Close the eyes, let the head and the neck go. This is half shoelace or half go mukasana, cow face pose. And sometimes we bend the bottom leg in this shape. We're not doing that today because we do want to get into the backside of that right leg.
And start to walk the chest back up. So you come back up to seated, bring the hands back behind you, extend the left leg out in front of you, soles of the feet to the mat, knees wide, knees side to side, windshield wipers. Then legs go out in front of you. You may or may not need to sit up on a block, lowest height, lean to the left, bring that right leg back behind you. And then if you can sit this way, both hips are even underneath you stay there. If not, make sure you get a block underneath you or something to lift the hips up. It gives you more room to make that happen. So top of the right foot is on the mat as best you can. Uh, knees are together, sitting up tall. Maybe you start to walk the hands back. If there's enough space to do that, you want to keep that right knee down on the mat. Gaze is forward. So the neck stays long. You can close the eyes. You have plenty of time here. So stay here. If you want to go back further, you're welcome to maybe on the forearms. If you're on a block, don't go any lower. If you're not on a block and this is all really easy and you know you can lie down all the way back, go for it. Pacing yourself. So you can sustain the shape. If you're all the way reclined, head back on the mat, start to press into the hands and the forearms to lift the head, looking forward. As you work your way up from your forearms to the hands, sitting reclined, you'll start to walk the hands forward, coming up to seated. Then we'll all lean to the left so you can bring that right leg forward out in front of you. Hands back behind you, feet wide, knees apart then bring the knees side to side like windshield wipers. Just getting the circulation back. You'll come back to seated legs out in front of you. If you know you don't need the block, you can set it off to the side or you can try with the block first and always come down lower if you want to. Sole the right foot to the mat, 
step the right foot over the left leg and then grab onto that outer right ankle bone, bring it over to the side, working towards stacked knees. Both hips are down on the mat, sit up tall, and then start to fold forward over the legs. Any amount that feels good in your body. Blocks could be great here too. If you're not using one underneath the hips, you can bring them underneath the hands, the forms like armrests. You can let the spine round, eyes close, head and neck go. Especially if you're comfortable in forward folds, they're not easy for everyone, especially if the backside of the body is tight. It's time to come back up. So walking yourself back up to seated, bring the hands back behind you, extend the right leg forward, soles of the feet to the mat, knees wide, knees side to side, windshield wipers one last time. These asymmetrical poses are a nice way to see what's happening in your body. We're often uneven side to side. So you may have felt that in one or all of those shapes. Okay. So soles of the feet on the mat, come on down onto your back, look, resting the head on the mat. And then from here, extend the legs out in front of you. Keep the feet a little wider than hip width distance apart. So they're not touching toes can turn out, reach the arms overhead, finding a stretch and then clasp opposite elbows. You can let the arms just rest overhead. Clasping opposite elbows, it could be looser than that. So maybe it's more like forearms or wrists, just see what's happening. Take the right foot, cross it on top of the left foot. So the legs are straight, you're hooking the feet at the ankles and you feel that length in the right side of the body. We'll add on, so lift the upper body up and away from the mat, move it over to the left and then set everything back down. So you're not going very far because we want to rest the back side of the head, both shoulders, both hips on the mat. 
So everything's still resting. If someone were to take a picture from you from up top, you would look like you're in a banana shape. And that is what the shape's called, banana. Close the eyes and start to relax. So sometimes we squeeze the legs together. You don't need to here. So the feet are hooked the way that they are so that you can let the legs relax. The legs relax. That right side of the body starts to feel some length, but so does the left. You'll lift the upper body, bring it back to center, uncross the feet, stretch the arms overhead, get long, bring the knees in toward the chest. Give yourself a squeeze. You could even rock side to side a little bit. Set the feet down onto the mat, scoot the hips over to the right, bring the knees over to the left. So you're coming into a reclined spinal twist, right arm reaches outside the shoulder gaze could fall over that right arm. If you have anything going on in the shoulders, this can be tough. So if it's too much to have the arm extended out and you need more uh, of a break in the shoulders, bring the arm down by the side. And that's really soft. If you don't have anything going on in the shoulders, reach the arm out to the right hand in line with the shoulder. And if the neck's okay with it, the head just rolls to the right. So we're using that length we just created on the right side of the body and taking that into a twist.
bring the head back to center, come back onto your back, use the feet to get there. Extend the legs out in front of you, feet hip width distance apart or a little bit wider. Reach the arms overhead. Clasp opposite elbows the other way. So there's one way you prefer. Cross the left foot on top of the right foot. You may need to bring the feet over to the center of the mat or more over to the right. Lift the upper body up. Reach it over to the right a little bit. Set everything back down. So heads down. Both shoulder blades are evenly touching the mat and both hips are down. You know, you've gone too far when that left hip, left shoulder are starting to lift just so you get the, the upper body over to the right a little bit more. And then if you feel like you're squeezing the legs, cause sometimes that naturally wants to happen, see if you can let them release. They won't go anywhere. That's why you're hooking the feet. Close the eyes, start to melt in banana on the other side. You know where we're headed after this. We're coming into that twist. This time the knees will be going over to the right. Stay where you are. You're just thinking about that length that you're creating in this pose to take it with you into the next pose. Bring the upper body back to center, uncross the feet, stretch the arms overhead, start to walk the feet in, hug the knees in toward the chest. You can rock side to side a little bit if you'd like. Set the feet back down to the mat. We scoot the hips over to the left, then bring the knees over to the right. So you get that stacking of the left hip on top of the right hip, left arm reaches outside the shoulder or down by the side, if that's too much. Close the eyes. Taking the twist where you want it to be. So you don't want it to be as deep as you can possibly go, but a place where it feels good. You're not thinking about how long you'll be here. Somewhere where you can rest in the shape.
bring the head back to center. Let's take the left arm, bring it all the way over to the right. So you're lying on your right side. Use the hands to bring yourself up to seated. We'll start to set up for Shavasana. Uh, props, if you have them, blocks. So you'll take two blocks, uh, bring them the lowest height all the way together, the widest way. So like this, and you'll bring it down in, in front of you um, at the top of the mat. If you don't have blocks, you could use a bolster, but the preference is blocks for this just because they are firmer, but it still feels good if you don't have that or a pillow blanket, couple blankets, whatever you have. Oh, great. I just knocked it over. Okay. So heels go on the blocks. You want to bend in the legs because you're going to lie all the way back. You might even, even need to scoot the hips forward, then come on down onto your back. So the legs are straight. You have the width so you can turn the toes out arms down by the sides, head rest. So it's Shavasana with the feet elevated, which we know when we elevate the feet, it calms us down, helps us relax quicker. Not that you need the speed, but we're trying to get you into a deeper state of Shavasana more quickly. So as you close the eyes, take a deeper breath in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. close the lips, go back to breathing on your own. So just your natural way of breathing, the one you don't have to think about. Let's start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. One foot at a time, bring the feet to the mat. Hug the knees in toward the chest, maybe rock side to side. Set the feet back down, roll over to your right side, cradle the head and the arm. Then using the left hand, bring yourself up to seated, comfortable seat, sitting up tall, eyes closed. 
Bring the hands together in front of you. Bow the head slightly. Take a moment to yourself, honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit. As well as everyone else in your world. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to guide you through your yin practice today. It's a privilege. I'll see you next time for Yin or Flow.